Okay, Alex, on behalf of, of Slash Tracks Action News and the Slash Tracks brand, I tried to fix things with Sid for you because you, you just keep destroying his cars. Um, he's angry. He he wrote us Clearly. on the email. He wrote us on the email, sent us a video message for you, and I'm gonna play it for you. I haven't seen it myself, so this will be the first time I've seen it. I'm kind of iffy about playing something I haven't seen, you know, on the show, but here we go. Okay. Don't you know what I know? Because you only yeah yeah okay so half the brain he i don't think he understood what he said and i think when he finds out that he sent that to us he's going to be even more mad at me because now he looks even worse so i think that him trying to get back at us just made him is going to make him even more mad yeah i think i think this is slash tracks like three sid zero like like I think we've won the feud. I think I think Sid is defeated. What do you think? Let I think so too, comments. but I yeah. I doubt this is the last time we hear from Sid Justice. Oh, uh, I I'm sure he's going to have more to say after this, especially if he finds out how dumb he looked and that we aired it. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode number 31 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm not. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. <laughs> and Happy Christmas. Who are you? Not Alex Vanover. What? Josh LaRue. What? Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's better. <laughs> and that's the bottom line. Hey, uh, yeah, I better not try to be too funny, though, because I like my own jokes too much. Uh, we're going to delve into that in the mean comment, nice comment, mean comment, which we're actually getting into right now. We're skipping all the fluff. Okay, let's do it. All right. right. After these messages, we'll be right back. Nice comment. <laughs> I'm all about business right now. Josh, nice comment. And this is a short and sweet one. I'm hooked. And this is from Cinerin2634. And that's regarding Slash Tracks News number 30. Uh, so Cinerin's hooked on the on the podcast, Josh. Good to have you here. It's a great thing to be addicted to, Slash Tracks. Yeah. Uh, of the things we could be ad addicted to, allegedly, Josh, <laughs> this person's addicted to Slash Tracks. Uh, let's get into another nice comment. All right. All right. I was not expecting this to be so good. You guys are quite entertaining. I really enjoyed the segments and how you cover horror, wrestling, and other sports. It's right down my alley, 100%. And this is from another uh, Cinerin X, Cax, Slash Track, and this is uh, on Slash Tracks News, episode number 30. So the same uh, podcast episode. So didn't expect this to be so good. So kind of a backhanded compliment, but still a compliment nonetheless. Wow, thank you. Thank you. We got like two like that recently. I remember hearing and reading another one like that. Uh, yeah, it's like I, I clicked on this link thinking it was going to be absolute crap. And then I stuck around and enjoyed it. So thank you for that. Well, hey, that if that's the way it works, I'll take it. Any new viewer yeah. is an awesome viewer. So welcome to the Slash Tracks uh, Slashaholic Army. Yeah, click that subscribe button. Head to Slash Tracks 2020 at gmail.com. Send a Dear Slashy, send a would you rather, and then you, Cinerin 
CAX could be in the next episode of Slash Trex, uh Action News, which you already are in one right now. So congratulations. And if you haven't done so already, see uh, right up there or down there. I don't know where I'm going to put it when I edit. Patreon.com forward slash 80 slash librarian. Sign up for as low as a buck a month and it helps support the channel. Uh, the only way to fund the channel is through our Patreon. You can do it on PayPal, daylighter07 at yahoo.com. Or you can even order a cameo from us. That could be some fun, right? $10 a video. We're your prostitutes when it comes to cameo videos. Whatever you want us to do, we're going to do it. So send your suggestions in. We'll shoot you a video and you'll help support the channel. Maybe maybe in a, a Patreon, they could ask us for Dear Slashy. Or would you rather in the in the Patreon? And we could answer it, like really flesh it out. Yeah, or we could do Seasons Greetings, Josh, mm -hmm. Holiday. On Cameo, it's anything, anything uh, you want. And, uh, you know, the link's in the description below. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just 10 bucks a video. You're supporting the channel, and you can have some fun with us while you're doing it. So Yeah, do it. Uh, Josh, the reason I jumped into mean comment, nice comment so quick and just did two nice comments in a row instead of nice, mean, not nice is because I want to get into this mean comment. Oh, okay. Goodness. I know. Uh, this has been coming. Let's hear it. All right. Okay. I'm sorry, but the Alex guy is not as funny as he thinks he is, and he comes across as crass and rude, and his eyes are sunk sunken in like he's on drugs, question mark, no sleep, question mark, and that Josh dude, lose your stinking accent and keep the crappy camera so we don't have to see you. Get a clue, both of you. And this is from our friend Donovan Garcia, uh ko40k who gives a crap what the rest of his bullshit is uh name um and this is in regards to slash tracks action news episode number 30 so you got any thoughts on this really shitty comment this person left well i guess i'm gonna start talking with an irish accent alex since i have to lose my act my natural accent um you gotta get a facelift or something there alex boy get them eyes back out where they're supposed to be Get some sleep and quit the drugs. <laughs> I read this comment <laughs> at like four o'clock in the morning. Oh, no. When I was getting up to go exercise. So, and I saw that the guy had posted this like 20 minutes prior. So this guy who went into our comments and posted this crap, this like highly personal attack at both of us. Saying shit he doesn't doesn't know anything about. Um, he doesn't know anything other than the last episode he saw of us. And he decided to fire some shots at us. So I normally ignore this kind of stuff, but I was pissed. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was quite ironic that he was talking about how my eyes were sunk in like I hadn't gotten any sleep. Well, guess what, douchebag? You were <laughs> correct. I fucking don't get a lot of sleep because I work a full-time job. We do slash tracks. Uh, which we don't get paid for. We do it because we want to have fun and we want to entertain the YouTube channel and whoever else comes across this. And I exercise every day. As a matter of fact, I worked out for over two years straight. Uh, I work out six days a week now. Uh, I used to weigh 358 pounds. Uh, I got all the way down to 204 pounds. Uh, I haven't drank alcohol in almost nine years. I've never done drugs. My mother died from a drug-related incident. And for you to say something like that really pissed me off. But Josh, can you show this asshole my before and after photo uh, just so he knows what I'm all about? Yeah, let's do it now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to, to let this, this motherfucker know that I'm not joking. I am what I say I am. Uh, I'm normally very, I try to keep this tone as light as possible. I don't, I try not to get serious. I, you know, I reel it, dial it back if I get too serious because I want to have fun. Everything's too heavy, but for some reason that got under my skin. And I think it was because I, as, as I'm getting up to go exercise, he had just posted that at like four or five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So it's like, listen, you shit. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I'm about. You don't know what Josh is about. You saying stuff about his accent, saying stuff about how nobody wants to see him or his camera. That's all bullshit. Josh has done pro wrestling. Josh has been on TV shows. He's done audio books. He's done so many things that people like you can only speak about uh, that you've seen other people do it. 
you when you say crap like this, it's not a problem with Josh and I. It's a problem with you. You are projecting your own insecurities and issues on us. So the problem has nothing to do with Josh and I. It, the problem is that you're having to attack uh, strangers at three or, or four o'clock in the morning like this. So I think if you need help and you want to have a dear slashy question, maybe next time you write into us, why don't you ask us how you should behave in the future with strangers you don't know? Um, treat people with kindness, always. There's too many assholes in the world. And I challenge you, dude, let's see a picture of you other than your tiny little profile picture on your YouTube, you fucking chump. Uh, anyway. At gmail.com, send it to us. You know, let's see if you've done something as badass as what Alex has done. Uh, working out for two years straight, losing all that weight and, uh, you know, doing such hard work to get there. And we'll put, we'll post it, send it to us, prove us wrong and what we think about you. And you know what? In the future, I'm just saying YouTube has put this little thing called a thumbs down button on videos. Instead of being a complete dick for no reason with people you don't know, if you don't like what you're seeing, what you're hearing, if you don't like Alex's face or his jokes or my accent or what I look like or whatever, click the thumbs down button, move on. It's really pathetic that you actually took time out of your day, morning, whatever it was to type that up. You're not impressing anybody, man. Not one person. So that's all I got to say about it. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. I just, I, I know we've talked about it off camera. I know I, for and I'm really good at like letting stuff like that roll off my back. But for some reason, just with my history and where I've came from and who I am and my family and everything, it just really pissed me off. So uh, let's cleanse our palate and never talk about this guy ever again, unless he sends the picture in, because if he doesn't, he's a chump. Let's get into a nice comment to end this sec this uh, segment. Let's do it. All right. Um, this is on, uh, okay. So this is, this is about our last slash tracks episode. So glad to see MSTs doing homages like this. Big heart keeps circulating the tapes. And this is from Tanuki Okio, Okio. And this is uh, regarding slash tracks. Number 27, Halloween five, the revenge of Michael Myers. That was a really cool comment. I had to share that on the community tab. Um, yeah, that was a really nice one. So that's the opposite of the, <laughs> the comment we got prior. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't bad. Josh, let's get into some fun facts. Let's do it. Okay, fun facts. I fucking can't stand the guy who left the mean comment <laughs> in the previous segment. You're darn, you're darn tootin'. That's a fun fact there, Alex. Yeah, uh, fun fact. That guy's a fuck face. All right. In 1901, Josh, an eternal light bulb was connected in California. That light bulb still hasn't gone out to this day. Wow. Um, that's the, and we can't even like buy a light bulb that lasts, uh, you know, more than a few months nowadays. So yeah, they do it by design. They do that on purpose. They make them. They make them temporary, so you'll go back and buy another light bulb. That's why vehicles are so shit now compared to, you know, how, like, uh, I work in a shop, so I see it a lot. Like, older vehicles run forever. Newer vehicles, you know, you have problem after problem, and they want you to get a new one every few years. Uh, mm -hmm. so they quit making them quality. But, yeah, that that's uh, that eternal light bulb makes me think of, like, tesla you know like he had he wanted to do stuff like that uh, free energy and everything uh, money always wins out in the end i'm surprised the uh light bulb's been allowed to burn so long showing people that it's possible uh, <laughs> yeah they're like don't look behind the curtain like it's the wizard of oz situation uh but i was gonna say like it reminds me of that meme or that picture where it's a fridge from the 70s and it's like the olive green fridge and it said i am eternal i am endless i will outlive you your family and all of your children's children uh because they don't make things like they used to uh my grandpa had a radio from like the 40s that fell in a paint can and was just completely soaked in paint still still works to this day um it's oh. just amazing how some of that stuff I, they just don't i don't know man I, do you remember tvs they would actually like the big wooden jobs were oh, your yeah. grandparents' TVs. I had some people when I was a kid. So yeah, some people still have those TVs, uh, like in their grandparents' houses, and they still work. They're really good uh, video games, as long as you don't mess with the knobs, like the twenty knobs underneath the. 
when you open the little panel on the front. Yeah. They they designed uh, stuff like that to last. Um, nowadays, TVs especially, uh, I know we kind of already touched on this, but TVs especially, it seems like TVs last about three years. And then you have to get another one. You have to replace it. Yeah. Smartphones and all that. You have to, you know, get updated like constantly. Tinfoil hat time. I might have to do a segment for this. <laughs> Anybody else think it's kind of weird that all like technology boomed after like the whole Roswell incident was supposedly happened, you know, like everything has boomed since then. And we're to the point now with all these smartphones, all these chips and stuff that shouldn't be in existence in that abundance. I don't know, something, maybe alien tech or something. Uh, awfully fishy. Well, they've already gone on record saying there are aliens. Like, there's footage of UFOs. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, the technology boom happened after that. It's just gotten more, more and more advanced. And, like, the kind of chips and stuff that have to be used in these TVs and phones and computers shouldn't be in that big of abundance. And, yeah, I know a lot of it's synthetic, but not all of it's synthetic. And the non-synthetic stuff should not be that easily accessible. Uh, in fact, it's not an expert, but I have this guy from Country Buffet that was going to say something about this. Country Buffet guy, what do you think of the, the whole alien tech thing? Do you like hot fudge sundaes? <laughs> well, that makes no sense at all. I don't even... Sorry, Alex, continue. I'm just confused. I've... You just keep hiring people with money we don't have. From this production budget, first of all, I'm I'm, I'm not doing too bad, I guess. Uh, but you just keep hiring these random people, like you start IPW. Now you're at the country buffet hiring people. Um, he's good food. He's he seemed like gotta, a nice guy that was knowledgeable, but that made no yeah. sense. We'll check back in with him later. But okay. Um. Hey, John. Josh, scientists have concluded that the chicken came first, Josh, not the egg. Because the protein which makes eggshells is only produced by hens. Hmm. So scientifically, the chicken came before the egg. We can put it to rest now. Okay, finally. Now we can move on to who let the dogs out. The Baja Man, baby. <laughs> There's a documentary on that song. And the Baja Men were not the people who created that song. I watched like an hour-long documentary on that song. Um... Yeah, uh, and wait, the Baja, wait, the you Baja watched Man the ripped it. Go ahead, go ahead. I got a question oh, when you're done. You no, know, go ahead, go ahead. You watched an hour-long documentary on the Baja Man, but I couldn't get you to watch the King of Kong, a Fistful of Quarters documentary? I already watched the King of Kong. Oh, I okay, seen... okay, okay, okay. I just didn't want to watch it again. I've seen the King of Kong, like, at least ten times. Like, Steve Wiebe is my hero. I love Steve Wiebe. I love yeah. Him. And the Troll 2. Oh, you did watch the Troll 2 documentary, so that's cool. Yeah. There's um, one, I can't remember what it was, but anyways, yeah. I, there's I, been a couple. So I pretty much anything you've recommended I've watched. I think the thing that you're having a hard time getting me to watch is Always Sunny. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Because uh, we've had several uh, discussions about Always Sunny. And for some reason, I just always, I don't know. I'm a creature of habit. Like if I'm going through Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime, I always end up watching the same five shows I've watched. <laughs> Yeah, I'm back in the on Meets World again. <laughs> yeah, same. My wife and I just ordered a cameo video from uh, Mr. Feeney. Oh, my God. That, 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 that great. Was our, that was our Christmas present for each other. And uh, we we said Mr. we need advice from Mr. Feeney uh, because I'm having uh, trouble uh, with, like, being sad about my kids not being little anymore and being teenagers, not needing dad as much, you know? Okay. And Beth is, like, concerned about our two adult kids that, uh, you know, concerned about them being adults and being on their own. And we thought that was a great way to get like a Mr. Feeney pep talk. So maybe I'll, I'll throw it on the air once we get the video from him. So it should be. Please. William Daniels is a national treasure and we need to like treat him as such. Yes. Uh, we're lucky to even still have Mr. Daniels around. So I cannot wait to see that. After these messages, <laughs> we'll be right back. Hello, Joshua and Beth. It's Bill Daniels from Boy Meets World. I understand that your kids are now about the same age as Corey and Topanga were when I appeared with them. First of all, 
all those young people are now very fine adults. And I'm confident your children will be too. As for not being little anymore, I promise that your kids need you now as much as ever. Maybe just in a different way. Hmm? So, remember the words of George Feeney. Believe in yourself, dream, try, do good. Best of luck and happy holidays. Uh, Josh. I wanted to get one from Jason David Frank and I never did. So I, I pulled the trigger on this. Um, I didn't want to have any more regrets about that because we don't know how much longer we're going to have anybody. And like you said, William Daniels is a national treasure. So he, he's freaking Kit from Knight Rider. He's the car. He, uh, he's been in so many amazing things. Um, you, so you brought up Jason David Frank. I just wa finished watching uh, the Power Rangers, uh, the five episode arc where he's introduced as the Green Ranger. I just finished it today, by the way. I started it on Thanksgiving and, and I watched the first two episodes. I just watched three, four and five today. Um, Tommy is Tommy is like uh, Hulk Hogan in the 80s. He's like overpowered. Like he's basically able to take anybody and everything on uh he can just destroy like he takes on <laughs> he takes on jason jason's like come on you, you think you can take me and then tommy's like yeah and then like just throws the dragon dagger right at his chest and just fucks him up um i love when we mean you talked about it as kids when we rented it at the video store in vhs they never had parts one or whatever you know you had to rent like part three yeah then part two out of sequence out of sequence yeah. I'd be watching like because some asshole kid would have checked out like two, four, and five. So then I just happened to get one and three, and then a week later I'd get lucky and maybe get five and two. So I'd be missing parts of it because when we were kids, slashaholics, uh, you had to watch reruns and you had to get lucky at yeah. that. Yeah, I started cause... my Power Ranger journey with the uh, Green with Evil videos, and uh, I had to watch them out of order. But then when I, I was like, I'm going to watch Power Rangers on TV. And the first rerun I got almost turned me off from the show, even as a kid, because it was the uh, Pudgy Pig episode. Where yeah. They, they use no Japanese Zord footage or anything. So there was no Zords. Yeah. It was like the worst costume for a villain ever on the show. His arms were like, yeah. he looked like just an apple or something. And he had his little arms out and his little legs out. A naked pig head and a helmet or something. I don't know. But uh Anyways, I uh, love the show. I could watch it to this day. I could watch every season of Power Rangers. Uh, my kids got me to watch like Lightspeed Rescue and stuff like that a few years back. And there were some dark episodes, man. It's That's that's a discussion for another day. But um, I'd love to do a podcast in the future, just watching each, you know, a few episodes at a time and discussing them. But, I would uh, 100% be down for a Power Rangers spinoff slash tracks. Uh, uh, podcast the problem is it would get like 20 viewers per episode yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, it, would just, cares, it would just be an excuse for us to get to watch power rangers with yeah. our, our wives and girlfriends making fun of us for it so i just got uh nicole just got me the greatest uh christmas ornament ever uh she got me the green ranger i got a green ranger christmas ornament for the tree that's awesome yeah um so that was really nice for thank you nicole um let's get to the next fun fact yes the U.S. State Department, Josh, officially recommends that if you travel to Somalia, you should first draft a will, designate appropriate insurance beneficiaries, and appoint one family member to serve as the point of contact with hostage takers. I completely agree, but their cookies are so good. Love the cookies. When they when they bring them to the door, the little kids and that are usually girls sell you the cookies. They're so good. Is that what you're talking about, those cookies? No, if you go to Somalia, they're oh. The, oh, you're not talking about the Girl Scout cookies, okay? No, That's they're so saying scary. That's scary. So it's like if you're gonna go to Somalia, like for a job or to, to like some sort of goodwill thing or to help people over there, like the U.S. is basically saying like there's a high chance that you're gonna die, so you need to do X, Y, and Z before you even go over there. That's terrifying. Um, you're gonna end up in like a Ryan Reynolds situation in that movie where he's in Iraq, you know, and ends up buried or whatever, just because he's over there working. 
uh yeah that's some scary shit man there was um it wasn't that the captain phillips movie with tom hanks where it was like somalian pilot or pirates yeah and they're like look at me look at me i'm the captain now i'm the captain now tom hanks not you <laughs> okay and tom hanks is like mama said somalian pirates do as somalian pirates do they <laughs> wanted the boat He's the captain now. Mama said this was my magic boat. <laughs> what was that? Uh, Tom Hanks had a run of movies that were like, he had a movie that came out around that time where he was like a guy who like landed a plane like oh, on yeah. a, a body of water. Yeah. Um, Lenny or something. I can't remember the name, but he was like a hero. And then he came out with that Captain Phillips. Um I think when he chooses movies now, he he just like he doesn't even do box office appeal anymore. He's like, what movie could I win an Oscar for? I think that's basically how he chooses his scripts. Except for David S. Pumpkins on Saturday Night Live. I was about uh, to that's say, how he chooses his roles. I love the David S. Pumpkins animated special, but I would love I would watch a David Pumpkins movie, and you know one day they're gonna push for that. And there hasn't the been a good movie? SNL movie in a while, but I can see them making that. Have but have they ever made an SNL movie with a guest star other than someone they had in their regular cast being a movie? I don't know. I mean, the 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 skeletons uh, have left the show since the first skit, but they came back last year, which I didn't even know they did a, a second David Pumpkin skit, like with the haunted yeah. house and everything until this year, but it was last year. And they I don't came back think I caught it. Yeah, I don't think I caught the second skit. I'm going to have to do a deep dive on YouTube after this. Yeah, it's called David S. Pumpkin's Returns. It's really good. Okay. It out. It's funny. Uh, hey, Josh, did you know in reality, plants are farming us by giving us oxygen so that we live and reproduce? So when we die and decompose, plants can then consume us. That's a very you know morbid that? thing to uh, talk about, but you know who I think might have something to say about that? Who who would that be? I paid him to do at least three or four things per episode, so we got to go <laughs> to the Country Buffet guy. Okay. What do you think of plants farming us, Country Buffet guy? Have you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. That made a little more sense, kind of, but... Uh, yeah, I, don't, I think I'm going to have to reconsider paying this guy. But, uh, Alex, that is kind of creepy and morbid. And uh, the fact that you looked that up worries me slightly. Uh, well, I was in a bad headspace after I read that mean comment the other night. So I was like, I just went down a really dark rabbit hole. Uh, I was going to say one thing about this, other than me being a dark son of a bitch uh, okay. for finding that. It's kind of like a Matrix situation. Like the plant, like, you know how in the Matrix, how the human bodies are used as batteries to like keep the AI robots alive sort of thing. So like the plants are using our bodies like as their energy to like stay alive sort I'm of thing. i to take your word on that because big admission and it's not a horror movie so I can't get in too much trouble but I am a sci-fi nerd too. I've never seen The Matrix, any of them. Never hold, watched The Matrix. Hold on. Yeah, never on. watched The Matrix. You give me shit yep. for not having seen Always Sunny but then you haven't seen The Matrix Never seen The Matrix. Okay. Not one Matrix movie. <laughs> Stop filming this episode right now and go watch The Matrix. This is okay. Ridiculous. Are I'm you serious? Sorry. Yeah, I've never seen The Matrix. Just, I, I want to. I've just never taken the time to watch it. So. Well, you obviously don't want to because the movie came out in 99. It's been like 24 years at this point, Josh. You I mean, don't like... want It's really good. Don't Just skip the sequels. Fuck the sequels. They weren't even supposed to have sequels. They just shoehorned sequels in to make more money. Okay. The first Matrix is a standalone deal, okay? Okay. okay. That's uh, all you need to watch. Don't uh, even watch the sequels. I'll watch it before the next episode. All right. Well, you don't even, just please watch the Matrix. <laughs> okay. All right. Last fun fact of the episode. Actually, I've got a small fun fact, but go ahead, brother. <laughs> uh, in the state of Wisconsin, ch children are legally allowed to consume alcohol at any age, even in public bars, as long as their legal legal guardian approves. Where is this again? Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. Yeah. The entire state of Wisconsin. Yes. That cannot be true. It is true. Have you checked with any of the IPW correspondents on this? Fuck. No, but we should, I guess. We don't have to. Okay. Jumping Jeff, is it true? 
Yep. Okay, it's true, but that's weird as shit, man. That that is scary. You can take like your toddler in there and be like, "Yeah, I'll have a I'll have a shot. Give him a beer." He's no, just put, we'll put the beer in the bottle. Get the nipple <laughs> off the bottle. He just wants a Jack and Coke. Put it put it in the fucking sippy cup. Wow, Wisconsin. Wow. Okay, cheese. Is, yeah, I, I just thought it was like a cheese thing, but it's like a getting kids drunk thing. Okay. When I was a kid in Oregon, I used to, I, I've talked about this on the show before. My mom would write a note and I could buy cigarettes yeah. for her at the grocery store with a note. That was the eighties. Um, I don't remember buying beer for her. I think I bought non-alcoholic beer for her and cigarettes. I don't think I ever bought actual beer, but I definitely bought tobacco products. Oh yeah. With a note. I was buying a pack of cigarettes for myself at like 15 years old at gas stations and stuff. People just didn't give a shit. They weren't getting yeah. fined thousands of dollars yet. Um, yeah, I was pumping totally. gas at five years old for my parents. All right, Josh, hop out and put $10 in the truck. You know, that's how I learned math before I went to school, pump out, pump gas for the parents. So damn, you had $10 worth of gas in the eighties. That was, that, that must've filled it up because yeah, that was, that's a lot that. back then. Yeah. Um, what was your fun fact you wanted to say? Uh, just a quick one. I heard this theory from uh, Groundhog Day that I just wanted to share with everybody. Uh, okay. You know, you know, the nerdy guy that Bill Murray runs into the insurance salesman. I can't remember his name right now. Uh, that I don't know his name. The shit out of him. OK, Bill Murray's character acts like he doesn't recognize him, but the dude recognizes him. And it all starts when that guy says, watch that first step. It's a doozy. Bill Murray steps in the puddle. The time loop starts, right? Yeah. And it doesn't end until the day where that insurance guy is like, yeah, he came to me today and took out death and dismemberment and da, 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 took out all these different insurances, right? Mm -hmm. They're saying that he's the devil and Bill Murray was put in this time loop until he signed a contract with the insurance guy, right? Mm -hmm. So he got the, he got the yeah. love of his life. Everybody loves him. Great career. Time loop ended, but he sold his soul to the devil. Thought that was a fun fact. Love to hear some people talk about that in the comments. What you think? Because is that a so is that a conspiracy? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's like a, a thing floating around in like the fandom that okay. that the insurance salesman is actually the devil, and that's why this whole thing happens so he can uh, snag a soul. Okay, how well, maybe doesn't end until he signs all those contracts. So the Groundhog's Day. Uh, here's a fun fact: Groundhog's Day was like the last movie that Harold Ramis who played Egon and Bill Murray who played, you know, Bankman in Ghostbusters. That was like one of the movies they started having major issues with in their personal life. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know that they worked with each other ever again after that film. Ghostbusters 2009, the video game. Okay. The first time We're... they did a project together. Yeah. They recorded their lines separately, but they did, they did agree to do the project together. That's as close as it got, I think. Uh, but which is really sad because they were like very, very good friends and they were, did a lot of projects together. Um, I think that Bill Murray, Bill Murray has like historically been hard to work with on movie sets, I think. And anything I've ever heard about Harold Ramis was that he was just like down to earth and like really nice and thoughtful, like the complete opposite of Bill Murray, which I hate to hear because I love Bill Murray. Harold's death apparently has changed Bill a lot. And if you, the ending to Ghostbusters Afterlife hits even harder if you know about, you know, the riff that him and uh, that Bill and Harold had. Uh, the whole ending, you know, that says for Harold, but like the mm -hmm. having him there next to, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Afterlife for some reason, uh, you know, Egon showing up as a ghost with the other Ghostbusters there. It hits even harder if you know about that. But yeah, I didn't mean to get us off on too big of a tangent. Uh, but yeah, um, those were well. some great fun facts. That's what we do on this show. Um, <laughs> so whatever, deal with it. Uh, let's get into a would you rather. Okay. Okay, and this is from our good friend Johnny Utah. Okay. And Johnny Utah actually wrote in at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. So this is straight from the email. So Johnny Utah, this is for you, pal. Uh, he asked us, Josh, he said, would you rather be on to catch a predator or America's Most Wanted? And this is from Johnny Utah. Uh, America's Most Wanted. <laughs> For sure. uh, for sure. there's there's two answers for me so either i'm gonna be on america's most wanted and i'm like being interviewed right about a bad guy 
So we can take that angle. Or if I'm on to catch a predator, I guess I could be someone working on the show that's catching bad guys. Like maybe I'm the one who like brings the pizza for the dirt bag to bring. I don't even, I don't know how that works. I don't know. I think that what Johnny's asking is, would you rather be a, a bad guy on this show or that show? And if that, if that's what you mean, I'm going to go with America's most. <laughs> yeah, me too. Because I, to catch a predator, there's not, you are what you are on that show. Yeah. Uh, but to like on America's most wanted, Josh and I could have robbed a bank and we did such a good job. We got away. <laughs> It'd, or it'd, something. Probably, it'd probably be more i'd probably end up on a show more like unsolved mysteries honestly the way my life goes all the crazy stuff i get into so yeah dude there was a kid there was a kid um from my area in oregon i think his name was jeremy bright uh i was born in coquille and he went missing in myrtle point and myrtle point is like right next to coquille it's it's almost like the same town the state fair for oregon or not the state fair the 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 fair for that town is in Myrtle Point, okay? Um, he went to the fair one day in the 80s and never came home. He's wow. been missing forever. Oh. And he's on an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. So I, I mean, remember my... I thought you meant he's been at the fair for for 40 years, man. Who, like, who has that much money to be at the fair for 40 years, first of all? You said he went to the fair and never came home. But no, he I went guess. to the... And, he's, and, and the Unsolved Mystery is how he could afford to still be there for 40 years. <laughs> He's still no, he, the main the big prizes. Yeah, he somebody kidnapped him or killed him, but he's still not been found. Um, but I remember he was like a legend around my town, even. It was like, you know, make sure you have someone walking with you, make sure you tell your parents where you're going. Um, here's another showing my age. Uh back in the 80s and 90s, there were no cell phones, there was no social media. So, like my mom or my dad or whatever, I'd just be like, Hey, I'm going to wherever, and they just let me go. Yeah. So if I got kidnapped or murdered or something, it's like, well, that's the that's the you know the risk they were willing to take, sort of thing. Do you remember? Have you ever heard of Morgan Nick? No. Okay. It's it's got some notoriety. Her family was on uh, Extreme Home Makeover. She was a little girl that got kidnapped at a ball game in the town I grew up in. Okay. One town over from where I live now. And she was always the cautionary tale, you know, whenever you're a kid, uh, you know, you remember what happened to Morgan Nick, it can happen anywhere. And this is like small mm -hmm. town, Southern Arkansas, you know, like, or not Southern Arkansas, Southern state, small rural area. And yeah. like, it was a pretty big deal. So it's kind of like what your story is. Uh, I think it might've been on there too, Unsolved Mysteries, the Morgan Nick story. Um, so yeah, we what happened? a story like that. She was just, does anyone, huh? any clue on what happened to Morgan? No, uh, to this day, not really, no. She just disappeared. There's like a white van, people said, but yeah. It's kind of like that. I, it's crazy. I feel like in the 80s and the 70s and stuff, I mean, p those guys, these these bad guys could be more brazen with their, with their bullshit because DNA wasn't really a thing yet. Um, there was really no, like, there's cameras everywhere now, so you can't do anything. Like, if you do something, you're you're on camera somewhere. I promise you, you're on camera somewhere. Um, but back then, you could get away with stuff for years and years and years and years and years. And some people have still gotten away with it. And a lot of these guys age out. I mean, they're dead. They're never going to get caught. They just a lot of these cops murderer man. They did. They did. I, it's it hasn't been officially proven, but it is pretty much it's him. The dude brags. Uh, I told my yeah. wife. I guarantee this guy thought it's been long enough. He could brag about it, and somebody nobody would and nobody would care or whatever. Yeah. Um, I was man, and then there's even rumors that that guy said that Puff Daddy allegedly is the one who commissioned the hit. That's just depressing. That's like saying Master P put the hit out. I mean, come on now. Yeah. Not even a badass rapper or anything. Really? Puff Daddy? Puff Daddy was good friends with B.I.G. and oh, and yeah. Puffy and Tupac were beefing some, West Coast, East Coast. Not even some underground badass rapper, just Puff Daddy? Okay. Dude, Puff Daddy, hey, Puff Daddy's in in a lot of hot water right now, Josh. He's kind of in an R. Kelly situation. He's got a lot of pending sexual uh misconduct like a lot of weird cases are popping up on puff daddy right now he's not having a good time right now want to bring this full circle johnny utah i think puff daddy might show up on to catch a predator the way it's going 
I don't even think he's going to, they're not even going to have to put a trap out for him. I think they already caught his ass. It's like, got your ass, Puffy. <laughs> he's going to be on to catch a predator for that. And for, for, you know, commissioning the killing of Tupac, he might be on America's Most Wanted. So that's a, that's a two for Johnny. Um, did we have a, a, a ass slashy this week? Uh, no, we uh, don't. Oh, you know what? We do. But I want to say one more thing about Puff Daddy. Okay. Okay. He always said, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> uh yeah you can stop and you will stop because your ass got caught how about that puff daddy i like that allegedly uh okay the ass slashy question i didn't write it down in the show um but we were asked an ask an ass slashy question there was a guy who wrote into slash tracks 2020 gmail.com um i don't have his name i apologize uh he wanted to know how josh like he wanted some advice on how to get into the wrestling business. So okay. Josh, the thing is, how do you do that? You're going to, uh, if you can find an area, if you live in an area like, uh, Orlando, you know, somewhere in Florida, close to like where they do NXT training and stuff, hit the gyms and try to find somebody. Uh, but really find out where your closest independent organization is, uh, go to the shows, um, work out every day you got to be in shape to do it you can't just uh, there's lots of videos of people wrestling that have no business wrestling you don't want to be that guy find your local independent promotion find out where a, a wrestling school is where these people go usually the independent promotion will also have a wrestling school sign up for the wrestling school uh give it your all uh whatever you got to do uh change your diet work out prove that you've got the heart to do it and uh, do what they tell you to do in, in the wrestling school. And I guarantee they're going to put you on their show. And from there, it's all about uh, rubbing elbows with the right people. Most independent shows bring in uh, people that, you know, used to be famous or that are in between promotions. Uh, you know, try to impress them when they come in. Any, and when you're new in the locker room, keep your mouth shut and your ears open. That's the best advice I can give. Be respectful. Soak in everything you can and give it, always give it your like 110% show that you have heart and you'll make it and you'll connect with the crowd uh, one way or the other. Don't have an ego. If you, cause you like, most people don't think that you can make money as a hill on the independent circuit. I was a hill and made more money than the faces cause I didn't have an ego. I had merchandise that said VIP sucks on it. And I would sell that at the shows <laughs> Uh, a lot of heels wouldn't do that, you know. Remember that you're not actually winning or losing here. You're you're an entertainer. So drop the ego, keep your mouth shut, ears open. You're gonna go far, kid. There you go. That's my advice. I think just since you already wrote into slash tracks 2020 gmail.com, Josh gave his advice because he was a pro wrestler. I'm gonna give you my advice. I'll get you in contact with Tony the Spider. <laughs> at ipw he's gonna let you know the ins and outs and i think we should go to tony the spider right now and ask him tony tony the spider how does this person get into the wrestling industry here's tony the spider <laughs> if you people only knew <laughs> he's a dick you know that he's like a he's a dick sometimes i think he's a dick uh, he's a dick Josh, let's get into some sports. Okay. All right. Frank Reich just set, just just made history, Josh. Frank, <laughs> looks like you know who Frank Reich is. Uh, Frank Reich is the first NFL head coach. I'm sure he's not the third. Fired, Sorry. To be fired in back-to-back -back seasons in NFL history. Last year, he was fired by the Colts, got hired by the Panthers this year in the offseason, got fired by the Panthers. He got fired two different teams back to back seasons. That is a record. What was was it budget cuts or performance no. issues? It was probably well performance issues. I mean, the Panthers were are are terrible. The season's not even over yet for the Panthers. Um if that was true. Yeah, the rookie... Dolphins would have a new coach every year. Like the Dolphins are pretty good this year, but last night they lost the, the Dolphins, by the way, were nine and three. Okay. If they would have won last night, they'd be ten and three. Josh, they were up by 13 points with like three minutes left in the game against the Titans, and they lost. They lost. 
I don't that hasn't happened since like 1996 to an NFL team. That's uh that's really that's a major you fucked up, buddy. The only time I was ever really into football, the Dolphins were my team, and everybody made fun of me for liking the Dolphins. <laughs> Did you like the Dolphins because of uh, Snowflake from Ace Ventura? Yep, that was it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Ray Finkel was your favorite player? <laughs> Actually, the movie got me into it, but I followed them for years after that, you know, so. The Dolphins have the, like, I'm going to, I've always said this, they have the best uniforms. Their colors are great. I love that turquoise and that orange or that teal or whatever they have. It's they they have great uniforms. I had so many dolphins trading cards in that period. I probably had more than any other person in the country for the dolphins <laughs> at that point. Any oh. other kid. What a what a just a scary mascot too. A mammal that has been known to save human beings. They can speak uh their own language. They're just like flipper. They have some of the most loving attributes of animals. Right. They also sexually attacked other dolphins so yeah, yeah. That, the, but that's the puff daddy species that's the uh, puff daddy offshoot <laughs> right yeah and that dolphin those that group of dolphins they're going to be on to catch a predator it's a new animal planet has a new season of to catch a predator it's based on all dolphins dolphins just catching sharks uh, not, no, dolphins I, I, I should not be allowed to talk during sports i think so I'm to gonna- catch a predator Animal Planet edition, and then they have the guy. He's all talking to the dolphin. He's like, "Take a seat, take a seat." And the dolphin's like, arr, arr, arr. "It's got a box of pizza and some DVDs." Why'd you bring condoms? <laughs> Where does the dolphin put the condom on its blowhole? <laughs> um, next sports story. This is like a fun fact, and this is really interesting. On April 6, eighteen ninety three. The longest boxing fight in history took place, Josh. It lasted 110 rounds, and it was between Andy Bowen and Jack Burke, and it ended ultimately in a draw. Five minutes ago. 1893, 110 rounds. And a round in boxing, I believe, is three minutes. Wow. Um, That's why wrestling turned fake, by the way. Another fun fact is because pro wrestling was real. And people would go, and it got to the point nobody would buy tickets because the shows would go on for like four, five, six hours at a time. Yeah, draws and stalemates and rest holds and shit because they're actually trying to win the match. Yeah, nobody would ever win (laughs) because it was like 1920s and 30s tough man, you know, because you can't tell if they're like sucking in their gut or actually in shape. Um, Yeah. No, man, 110 rounds. That's just, wow. Wow. The Maybe pitcher, boxing should have turned fake. <laughs> dude, the picture of them at the end of that fight, uh, Slashaholics, if you if you search this longest boxing match ever, look for the photo. They have uh, just, beards. They're, no, it, they're just, they're bloody from the top of their face all the way down their chest, all the way down their stomach. They're bleed. They're both, they look like they've been shot. Like they're bleeding all over the place, dude. These guys are a totally different kind of tough. And what's even sadder about this is they had to ride their big one-wheeled bicycles home after the fight. <laughs> that must have been hard to balance on top of that bike after they fought that long because they're probably just beat to shit. Um, let's get into the last sports story of the show. Let's do it. All right. Will Smith, not the rapper, but the baseball player. Okay. Will Smith, the pitcher just became the first player to ever win three straight World Series titles with three different teams. So he did it back to back to back. So in 2021, Will Smith won with the Braves. In 2022, Will Smith won with the Astros. And in 2023, Will Smith won with the Rangers. Oh my goodness. So wherever Will Smith goes, a world championship follows. And Will Smith, Slashaholics, just signed with the Kansas City Royals, which means, Josh, if if my math is correct, which it always is, uh, we need to go down to Vegas and place a bet on the Royals to win the World Series championship in 2024. And we need to get that coach to go coach the Royals. That way he, you know, can keep a Frank job. Frank Reich? Yeah. <laughs> so he could get fired and then they could rally around him getting fired to win the championship. Uh, the Royals were terrible this year, by the way. So he must have signed for the money at this point. He's like, oh, shit, I got three World Series rings. 
or maybe he knows something that we don't know because obviously he's a winner. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Um, but that's just kind of an interesting uh, little stat. Let's get into uh, wrestling. Okay, let's do it. All right, we we haven't had an episode in like two weeks, so we've got some stuff. We got some shit. Uh, yeah, we've got some stuff. So Tammy Sitch, Sunny, um, she was sentenced to 17 years in prison and eight years of probation uh, because of her involvement, basically what she did. She ran into uh, an old man, a 70-something-year-old man's car at a stop sign or at a stoplight, uh, killed him when she was driving under the influence, when she was going to get tacos, uh, killed the guy. And this wasn't Tammy Sitch's like first DUI situation. It was probably like her 20th. Uh, but she had finally ended in her killing someone. And now, so Tammy Sitch, I believe is 50 or 51. She's not going to get out of jail until she's almost 70. That's crazy. Um, this is, this is it for her. This is the end of like, Fine. we'll never see Tammy Sitch again, like in any promotion. You're never going to see an only fans from Tammy Sitch like she had. You wouldn't um, want to. Uh, you wouldn't no, want sunny, to. no sunny days ahead for her. There's no more vivid uh, contracts in her future. This this is it. Um, what's your thoughts on Tammy Sitch going to jail basically for life, I guess? I don't know. See, a lot of people are fans of her. Sorry, let me go off frame there. A lot of people, I'm trying to show off my new jacked bod, man. Oh, um, yeah. No. Tammy, to me, was just, she was a one-trick pony. She was just, and she was kind of a slut. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't know her personally, so I can't speak from experience, but I watch a lot of shoot interviews from wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And it just really sounds like that's what um, she was. She was just a ring rat that got famous. And uh, she didn't really have very many good wrestling skills. Her be best uh, attribute as a manager was wearing as few clothes as possible and having nip slips and, you know, butt slips or whatever it was called. I don't know. I just never really, other than being a dude and being like, oh, good, and there's an ass, you know, whatever. It's <laughs> what did she really bring to the table wrestling wise? You know, it's kind of without the attitude era, would we be talking about her right now? She wasn't even popular in the attitude era. She was popular in the new generation era. Um, that's when she showed up with the body Donna's from Smoky Mountain from Jim Cornette's uh, promotion. She came over with uh, Chris Candido and Zip, <laughs> which um they ended up winning the world tag team titles in a really weak watered down tag team division in like 1994 95 because there was like techno team 2000 the godwins the new rockers um just WCW. just a bunch of shitters didn't she come back with chris candido and wcw in like 99 yeah, they got, well, it was like 98, 99, but they got fired like almost immediately because she was, uh, somebody caught her with drugs in the locker room, which ironically, they they did a DNA test and she, or a drug test or something, and she wasn't doing the drugs she got fired for. Oh, no. But ultimately, her behavior back, uh, you know, behind the scenes in the locker room and everything had led them to that conclusion. Okay. Because she was doing drugs back then. The time she got caught red-handed, she actually wasn't doing it, though, which is kind of interesting. Um, then she went to ECW with Chris Candido, uh, which was, you know, her fian longtime fiancé. By the way, she was cheating on him with, you know, Shawn Michaels and the WWF and British Bulldog and whoever else oh, anyway, showed interest. She did a, yeah. she did a uh, uh, interview one time where they asked who all she had been with, and she said a shorter list would be who she hadn't been with. Wow. She like, was charging photos at a con, a convention where you could like get in bed with her what? Uh, and take photo. Yeah. You could like take photos of yourself in bed with her. Um, sunny day, have a sunny day at the convention. Jesus. She, she like, as far as what she brought to the table, she could talk. She was a good speaker on the mic. She could draw heat because of her personality. So she could like, she could get heat on herself and the tag team she was managing but as far as like in-ring skills and stuff, I remember her wrestling a couple matches and it was always like a bra and panties match or like she wasn't a worker. No. Um, she was she was a body that could talk a little bit. And then when Sable and Marlena showed up, that was the end for her. And then her personal issues backstage and all that other bullshit, that was the end of her career. Um, 
at least Sable got in the ring a little bit, but still she kind of falls under the same thing. It's like yeah. an evolution, you know, you went like Sunny, Sable, Trish, you know, Lita. And then where, where does China fit in? Where does China fit in? China's kind of her own thing, in my opinion, because I think China kept up with the dudes. You know, China was um she was one of a kind. She's everyone that I've ever heard speak of her, other than her issues with alcohol and drugs said she was a wonderful really kind human being i i think that she had she not have got into substance abuse her career could have got as big as she wanted it to be now that she's gone has she been put in the hall of fame i, ha I haven't kept up with that it was put in with dx okay about to say she definitely <clears throat> deserves it i know they won't do that you know <clears throat> like, like jim neidhart didn't get put in until um he passed. I actually brought him on a, in on a wrestling show I was doing. Um, I actually talked to Natty Neidhart about that on Twitter, you know, back and forth. Um, I'm not going to go into that, but uh, it's sad that it took passing away to be inducted. But I'm glad China got that because what I'm saying is she was in a league of her own. And I'm not trying to mm -hmm. like separate her from the other women or the men or whatever. But I mean, she was like, what, the first female intercontinental champion? Uh, the only yeah the, the only, only she, female intercontinental champion she eliminated men in the male royal rumble she was um, badass and just the softest spoken person you would meet uh like like alex was saying so she's definitely in a league of her own but i just meant like we went from like sunny to where we're at now mm -hmm. and in my opinion the female roster has been really kicking ass the past several years yeah, uh, even more entertaining and and even more talented than a lot of the men's the male roster on WWE. Whenever I actually tune in and watch it, yeah, the the women's roster has definitely held their own as far as wrestling matches. Um, you know, even going back ten years ago, women would get like, okay, you've got you guys have got a minute and a half for your match. Yeah, where they they gave a match them cut from a pay per view. Yeah, I mean, so things have changed for the better as far as women goes. Uh, Tammy was a a small piece of the evolution of where we're at now. How about that? There you go. There you go. Terrible human being. I hope she changes um, while she's incarcerated. Do I think she's going to? No. Um, ultimately, she should never be able to drive again. I think her driver's license was suspended for life, but I think when she had this accident, she was already didn't have a driver's license, so she doesn't give a shit. Um, I don't think she's sorry for what she did. I think she only showed remorse because she was going to jail for 17 years. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, Josh, on November 26th, 1994, over 29 years ago, Josh, Big Daddy Cool Diesel defeated Bob Backlund at Madison Square Garden at a house show for the WWF Championship belt in eight seconds. Yeah, that was Vince being done with Bob Backlund's shit. <laughs> they, they that was a transitional yeah transitional ch title wasn't it because brett got beat by bob yep right yep. why the hell did he win it at a house show i don't yeah bob wanted it at a house show didn't he bob beat brett um when owen convinced helen to throw the towel in okay i know see we look at it now as like a house show and we think oh why well, they changed the belt at a house show but we got to remember that back in those days raw wasn't as big as it is now and they still had their syndicated tv shows and a lot of their yeah. house shows became what you would see on tv superstars so, and all that stuff exactly <laughs> uh so a lot of title change because brett won the belt the first time at a house show i think that saskatoon on a house show against rick flair yeah so, um I had heard Bruce Pritchard on his podcast, something to wrestle with, with Conrad Thompson. He was asked that question. Um, and Bruce Pritchard allegedly says, or not allegedly, he said this. They changed the title at that house show because Vince wanted, like their house shows were lagging in sales for like ticket sales. Oh, okay. So they wanted fans to be able to have like, oh my God, the world heavyweight title changed hands at a house show. We need to go to a house show. Maybe we get to see something cool. Nobody called them house shows back then. See, I think Bob Pritchett is so full of shit sometimes that he just makes shit up on the spot to sound like he knows what. Like, I honestly feel like it was done on a house show because it was going to be used on TV. Like, they weren't going to do it, you know, on Raw or whatever because it was like just a show to showcase talent. 
at the time. Why why eight seconds though? I think it was like a punishment or just to, you know, because I heard Bob Backlund was being real difficult at the time and stuff. So maybe that Bob told um when Bob when Bob wasn't gonna be the champion anymore and they told him back in like 84, because Bob Backlund had been the champion for like four straight years at that point. Yeah. They're like Vince is like, all right, Bob, you're gonna lose the belt to, to the Sheik. All right. And then out of nowhere, I of the Tiger's gonna hit. And Hulk Hogan's gonna show up. And he's gonna beat the Sheik at Madison Square Garden. And uh, you're gonna be in the middle of it. You're not gonna have to lose the Hulk. Uh, it's gonna be beautiful. And Bob was like, I don't think that's a great idea because Hogan's not a real wrestler. Oh so Bob God. Backlund was like saying, like, I can't, like, I don't think you should put the belt on a guy who's not an actual amateur wrestler. Um well, in pro wrestling first one at that point good lord i bob back i listen bob backland has done some great things in wrestling i'm not gonna disparage him he was a good ba baby face he got over back in the day uh, could he be any more boring <laughs> no could he be any more bland no i i think he did a better run when he came back as the heel the guy who's like reading the fucking dictionary and he's calling everybody plebeians and he was like running for president do you remember that? Yes. That oh I remember watching I remember watching his title run back as a kid and thinking, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, because we were like five or like not even alive when he originally had the bell. And they were calling him old to you know, and he was like 40. He was 40 years and old. And really fit so, too. So now I'm 39 going, I used to call that guy old at 40, so it's it's I know it's <laughs> and it's, it's, here's one for you. Chris Jericho giving Hulk Hogan and Kevin Nash and all them shit in WCW for not letting the young guys have a spot. Yeah. Hogan was like 42 years old. 43 when Chris Jericho was saying that shit. Chris Jericho is now like, what, 52? And he looks, and Hogan and Nash look a hell of a lot better today than Jericho looks now. And he's still in the spot, so... Dude, Jericho, I've seen some of his matches in on AEW. A A A A A Maybe he is having his matches at A fucking A and W. No, um, A and W. A E W. No, A E W. He's been having some terrible matches. Like he can't even do full lion tamer lion salts anymore. He he looks winded. He looks gassed. He's trying to have the same work rate and move set that he did when he was like twenty two. Yeah, it's not. Um, He's got it doesn't look good. He's got granddad bod. <laughs> he needs to change his move set and the way he works. He um, it's it's just I can't suspend belief when I watch his matches, and he's extre He's very out of shape. I'm not shaming him. No, no, no. He no. just he could be in better shape if he wants to continue working. I think he's on that Fozzy tour, uh, that Fozzy cruise ship. Too much partying and and <laughs> rocking out instead of working. Yeah. I, I don't know. But Chris Jericho has done a lot of amazing things. He was the first ever WCW and WWF champion at the same time. He was the first guy to have the universal belt. He beat Stone Cold and The Rock on the same night to get both those belts. I've had to separate his like uh, life stuff from the wrestling stuff because mm. once I found out he was at a certain place that was invading a certain building of ours, I was like, yeah. okay. No, Wait, say it isn't so. <laughs> I don't think was he there or was his wife there? It might have just been his wife, but he's he's on the bandwagon. Oh yeah, he is. Uh, Jesse Ven <laughs> Jesse Ventura has a like an interview on YouTube slash Aholics that it what Josh is talking about. Um, if you can read between the lines, uh, Jesse Ventura talks about it, yeah. and Ventura's like, I'm not Democrat, I'm not Republican, blah blah blah. I'm pro, uh, you know, the Declaration of Independence. I'm pro the Constitution. And it's really interesting his take on that whole thing. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't mean to go down the rabbit hole. I was just saying. Oh, like, it's okay. I, I, I knew what you were talking about. I've had to separate Y two J from Chris Jericho. You know, because I yeah. love Chris Jericho. I do. I love the character. I love his journey. I think he should have. He should be putting more people over, and he should have been. He shouldn't have been AEW champion. Uh, maybe he was the inaugural world. champion, wasn't he? He was the first one, right? After that it should have been about putting the younger talent over. And, you know, I'm a Sting fan, but Chris Jericho's not Sting. Some people can wrestle when they're 63 
and suspend belief, like you said. Sting's one of those people, but at least even he is done. You know, he's he's announced he's he's leaving. Um, yeah, and he's only doing like tag matches. You know, he's not trying to go out there and exactly. He they're know. they're hiding him in tag matches um, while he's simultaneously getting Darby Allen over by Sting giving him the rub of approval. And Sting has two things going for him. This is the last thing I'm going to say about Jericho. Sting has the face paint right it can hide the wrinkles and stuff and also sting has uh no issues in his personal life he doesn't party um it's not aging him prematurely or dragging him down so if anything sting has had longevity added to his career by his good life choices later in life do you keep up with since we're almost done with wrestling do you keep up with the ddp buff bagwell saga going on right now I was following that when he first went to the accountability crib months and months and months ago. And he was actually trying to like change his life. And he, I even, t I even talked to Buff Bagwell on Twitter. Yeah. I've spoken to Buff. Yeah. To I, I talked to Buff Bagwell. Um, but he recently got a DUI. Didn't, didn't he just recently get arrested or something? That's he fell thing. off the wagon. No, he did a video where he's like explaining that he didn't fall off the wagon. He just let his anger do something where he, screwed up a court thing and that's why he's going back he's he it's it's the original dui that he's going to go to jail for because of da 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 and he talks about and it's like him sitting there doing this interview it's on instagram and stuff through ddp it's like five minutes long and he's like explaining how his journey he's been sober for so many days 900 days or whatever da 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 i got my let my anger get a da 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 and now i'm going to go to jail people are saying i fell off the wagon i didn't I don't believe a word he says. He is so full of shit. He, in my yeah. opinion, he's not matured. Uh, he's still the same guy that had his mom called WWF. And it's like, I would have more respect for him right now if he would just own it and not try to bullshit everybody. If I'm right, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, Marcus. I do. I do think that you had a fun career. You're, you're a part of history. And I do hope that if you are clean, congratulations. If you're really not, I hope that you get there. I hope that for anybody that's struggling with that, I've struggled with addiction before myself, and I always will. But I just don't see the sincerity when I watch that clip. I'll send you a link to it later, and maybe you'll see what I'm yeah. talking about. Uh, my wife, I don't know enough, and she was like, "I don't know." So I don't know enough about the situation recently with buff to like comment but what i do know about accountability in my own life is that if you're serious about changing or if you're serious about doing something it's a daily commitment to yourself and to your friends and family but mostly to yourself uh and it's also something that like you don't have to broadcast you don't have to like let everybody know what you're doing you, you just do make, it you um you can't make excuses anymore you yeah it's accountability excuses hundred percent hundred percent accountability a hundred percent ownership of your own shit uh which i think a lot of people today lack i think a lot of people would be able to accomplish amazing things in their life and goals that they set for themselves if they just had like full ownership yeah. like don't don't worry about what anybody else says don't worry about what anyone else is doing uh don't compare yourself to anybody else don't do any of that stuff if you focus on one task at a time and do it every day and put your full effort and heart into it, you're going to be fine. But just one day at a time, one thing at a time, full ownership. Don't blame yourself for not being where you want to be. Other people have nothing to do with it. It's all on you. Shit happens to everybody. And if it's you're just how you deal with it. Yeah. And if you're struggling with addiction of any kind, alcoholism, pills, drugs, whatever, and you're wanting to take that next step and you're wanting to get clean, um, there's all kinds of resources, uh, find, find a family friend, somebody write us at slash tracks, 2020 at gmail.com. Uh, we both dealt with addiction of different sorts. Oh, yeah. I was a daily drinker. I drank alcohol for years every day. Um, and going back to the mean comment thing real quick, I think that's why I was so offended because I'm so far removed yeah. from that lifestyle that it, but if you need help or assistance, uh, there's, I mean, seriously, you could just type it into Google. Uh, I'm struggling, blah, blah, blah. And there'll be so many resources that will pop right up. So you don't have to struggle alone. 
Always reach out if you need help. That's the first step. Um, final wrestling story of the episode. What do we got, boss? CM Punk is back in the WWE, Josh. Um, at the end of Survivor Series, War Games. So they had the War Games pay-per-view. Dusty Rhodes created that in WCW. Cody Rhodes actually got to perform in something his father created, which was really cool. CM Punk appeared at the very end of War Games. So like WWE was ending the pay-per-view. The credits were rolling, Josh. Mm -hmm. So the pay-per-view's over. The viewer at home thinks it's over. All of a sudden, CM Punk's music hits, cult of personality. Punk comes out. Seth Rollins had to be held back. He wanted to physically get out of him and like, like fist fight him. He was cussing him out. Um, at the time, nobody knew if that was a work or if that was real. Um, I kind of thought it was a work because they, I thought they were going to set up, you know, a feud, which is exactly what happened. <laughs> they are, they're, they're feuding now. I knew it was bullshit when I saw that. I was like, why is he reacting like this? Um, if he really wanted to fight him like that, he would have just jumped his ass in the locker room. Like they did in AEW, like the young bucks. Well, booked the uh, match with him and, and ended his career by injuring him. What's that? Or or do what he nor or do what Seth normally does, and you know just book a match with the guy and then injure him with the move by fucking it up. Well, they haven't done the match yet. Um, so he's still he's still working his master plan apparently. Here's the thing: CM Punk is going to be there for a short time, and in a future episode. We're going to be talking about how CM Punk's worst enemy is himself. Uh, the only way he's ever going to make it somewhere is if he drops the ego, quits acting like he's better than everybody else, and acts responsibly. He's always his worst enemy. He gets in his own way. He buys into his own hype way too much. And all we ever do is talk about his fuck-ups. So it's exciting that he's in WWE. It's a big deal. People are shocked. I get it. But at this point, it's just more of the same, in my opinion. Like every time I hear about CM Punk, there's some type of controversy or something. You know, it's like he's always got to be stirring shit up and being part in the middle of the story. So maybe he'll prove me wrong. Or maybe like episode 33 or 34 of our podcast here, we're going to be talking about, well, that didn't last long. So he's been drawing like huge numbers yeah he's a draw um, i'm not saying he's not he's, he's a draw but i think it's interesting i just think that what you were saying about how he needs to like dial it down or whatever i think that his appeal is the fact that he is like that and i think i i don't know that he can separate that but that's from what his fucks him in the end is yeah that, i know that i don't know what to do i don't know what to say i don't want to get all excited about it and then he's gone in a week you know, because of a back, backstage thing, you know, I don't know. He, his work, so I was watching his matches in AEW, and I don't know if it was because he had just a shitload of ring rust. He looked a step slow. He looked old um, comparatively yeah. to where he was because we hadn't seen him wrestle in like nine years at that point. Um, He looks a little buffer now that he's in WWE. He looks like he's been working out. Um, I would love to see him be able to work somewhat close to the way he used to. Um. I'd like him to keep his mouth shut in the locker room. And I, I, I don't know though, because I mean, WWE ultimately did fire him on his wedding day for like, for real. And I don't know how he's going to, I don't know how he's going to be able to like separate that ultimately. Like he, I, I know that he's getting paid a shitload of money and he's back mm -hmm. and it's all exciting and stuff, but human beings, that's going to be something hard to really let go of. Um, I, I think that could that resentment could pop up again in the future. If like Triple H says something to him yeah. that he doesn't like creatively or something, I don't know. I wish I wish I had known he was going to be as famous as he ended up being because I was in a locker room with him in Texas back in the day. And uh, I wish I had like a picture or something, you know, so I could have a little, his autograph or something. I was, a, I was I was in a locker room and I, I didn't even have a conversation with the guy. Um, he was making a joke with somebody because he was using the name CM Punk. That's that's something he came up with. And he said it was Cookie Monster Punk because that's what his grandma called him. But apparently there's like 10 different stories he's given for what CM stands for. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I wish I'd known. That would have been kind of cool. But so my my claim to fame with CM Punk is I was probably about 10 feet away from him. So we sweat. We sweated in the same locker room. That's about it. Damn. Um. So Punk slash Alex, he has officially declared himself for the Royal Rumble. 
uh, which means, and he says he wants to main event at WrestleMania, which was one of his grievances that he never got to main event at WrestleMania before. Good point. And he officially on Monday Night Raw signed with the Raw brand. So CM Punk is back on Raw and he's in the Royal Rumble. And Josh, let's get into horror. ECW. Let's put him on the ECW brand. Is that yeah? What, no, I haven't watched it in a minute. No, it's not a brand. I'm but kidding. he 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 went. So he he was on this like. Two, so I'm gonna say one more thing. He went on this like tour of like I'm gonna go down and talk to Shawn Michaels in NXT, and then I'm gonna go talk to SmackDown, and I'm gonna talk to WWE Raw, and then I'll make my choice. It's like they only said he went to talk to NXT because WWE is trying to make NXT like a thing, like on the same level playing field as SmackDown and Raw. Not the, I never not thought for one second. <laughs> Dude, yeah, Sean. Hey, hey, uh, hey, CM Punk, it's, uh, Sean Michaels. Uh, anyway, if Brett, if Brett said that, then that's what happened. Punk, you should sign. And, and Brett, I was fucked up, up at the time, Brett, and uh, HBK. Well, maybe he should, maybe, what would CM Punk, uh, let's say Macho Man was running NXT. How would Macho Man sell him? Oh, yeah, CM Punk, you're starting a lot of shit in the locker room, yeah. And you're, you're riding white lightning in the coattails of a dragon, yeah. And uh, I think CM Punk needs to come to where the Macho Madness is. And don't go where the boy toy is. And uh, we'll soar with the Eagles. We'll draw a lot of money, yeah. And we'll stay away from ECW. And uh, Buff Bagwell, yeah. And we won't slither with those snakes, yeah. And I am going to bring you to the promised land, yeah. And, I, and at the end of the day, we're going to count one, two, three WrestleMania main events. And dig it. Snap into a slim <laughs> Yep. Wait a second! Wait a goddamn second! This is this is Road Warrior Hawk. Well, <laughs> me and my partner, Animal and Shit. <laughs> Forgot about Shit. Oh my god! My partner, my third man, Shit. Uh, let's get into horror. Come on, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Jenna Ortega, okay, star of the upcoming Beetlejuice 2. She was the star of Scream 5 and 6. She mm -hmm. was in Netflix's Wednesday as Wednesday, okay? She's huge right now. Okay. She exited Scream 7, so she quit. Uh, that was because Melissa Barrera, who was uh, the star also of uh, Scream 5 and 6, played her sister. So those are the two main you know, heroes of the new Scream movies. Are they? Melissa Barrera was uh, fired from the Scream 7 after making controversial Palestine, uh, Palestinian posts. So I don't even know what she posted, whether it was pro or con or what. But uh, Miramax and the makers of Scream 7 fired her, like, immediately. And then Jenna Ortega said, well, I'm going to be filming something else at that point. Uh, I'm not going to do your movie. Which is basically her saying, that's my friend, you fired her, go fuck yourself. Right, I don't know the the what was posted, and I don't want to accidentally, you know. Yeah, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to. But yeah. maybe this is a chance for Screen to slow it down a little bit, and maybe go in a different direction. Because that's what they should be doing. They shouldn't be trying to like create this whole new trilogy or quadrilogy or whatever the hell they're trying to do. Like each movie now should be like a standalone like different parts of the country or different parts of the world, kind of like a, like I said, we should have like Saw movies where it's like the cult of Saw, like the cult of Ghostface, where there's these Ghostface murderers popping up all over the place. Um, I think that would be interesting where each movie has its own backstory and reason for the kills to be happening. You don't have to tie it to the originals. You don't have to tie it to the one that came before. That's just my opinion. But now that they've lost their, I guess their stars or whatever, they're going to have yeah. to do something different, you know? And no, we don't want to see Gail Weathers starring in the whole movie. Like, you killed the guy that could carry the movie with Dewey. And I haven't even watched part six because of them killing Dewey. So. They should resurrect. <clears throat> excuse me. Not They shouldn't resurrect anybody. They should, they should take this opportunity for Nev Campbell, Sidney Prescott, mm -hmm. 
to be vacationing in snow somewhere. She's on a ski trip. So we're going to have Ghostface in snow. But at the same time, NASA in space. is launching a spaceship to, to the moon. And somehow Sid accidentally gets frozen on her ski, ski trip or ski trip with <laughs> Ghostface, right? Ooh, they boy. get cryogenically frozen uh, by the snowstorm. So you get Ghostface in snow, and somehow they get on that rocket, and then they got Ghostface in space. Yep. At this point, why not? In it's, the same movie. The movie's already greenlit, so they have to make something. Have fun. Yeah. Have fun with it. God, I'm so sick of the same movie every time. And, you know, I didn't watch part six completely, but I know the twist at the end where, like, the dad is one of the killers or whatever. And it's like, really? What? Like, they're not even trying anymore. Like, <laughs> fucking, if, I, you, if you want to have a big twist, like, bring Stu back, you know, shit. They've so, already said they were going to, do you know Stu was supposed to be the killer in Scream 3? That would have been. Like, they, they paid, they paid Matthew Lillard to, to come back and be star in the movie. They paid him. But they ultimately decided to change it because the script uh, the script leaked. Oh my god! So it was like a Jason X thing. Do you remember when Jason X came out and it was leaked and they put someone posted it on the internet? So like, Jason X made a shitload of money. It still made money. It didn't make a ton of money, yeah. but it still made money. But yeah. had it not leaked, it would have made it would have made so much more money because at that point we hadn't seen Jason in the movie theater for like quite a while. I watched it in theaters. I watched the leaked copy. Of <laughs> <laughs> I watched it. I watched it in theaters, and then I watched the torrent. But yeah, uh, I was there in theaters watching it. That was the first Jason movie I ever got to see in theaters. Uh, followed that up with Freddy vs. Actually, I might have streamed. I might have torrented that one. I don't know. Uh, but I watched crazy. Jason X in theaters. So I saw Freddy vs. Jason in theaters like five times. Um. I saw the the Friday the 13th remake. I saw it twice. Um, I never saw the Nightmare on Elm Street remake in the theaters because even from the trailer, I was like, this is just them shot for shot trying to recapture what they did in the 84 movie with CGI. I rented it. I used to rent movies, bring them home and like rip them and burn them to DVD. Yeah. That's what I did with the remake of Freddy. So now you use it as toilet paper. Yeah, it, it was bad. I loved riffing it. Uh, that was fun. Um, what but, you doing, Nancy? Dark with that. I'm not going to hurt you, Nancy. I can't move my fucking mouth. It would have been good if, if he had been innocent. That would have been something that, and we agreed on that, that would have saved the movie if he was killing the kids because he was, you know, uh, he was actually innocent. He didn't actually do, hurt the kids. He didn't actually do bad stuff. And they they suspected him anyways and killed him. That would have been a good enough twist to make it stand on its own feet. But it was like a twist. A, yeah. They like attempted a twist on a twist. And it was a twist of like no twist at all. They didn't have the guts out, to follow through. Yeah. They like outthought themselves. They're like, we're going to throw a curveball on a, another twist, which ultimately leads us back to where we were in the beginning. Yeah. It, so it, it really. I enjoyed <clears throat> riffing it. I remember when Dead by Daylight announced that Freddy was coming. They put out a teaser where, like, mm -hmm. uh, claw marks, like, hit a pipe on one of the maps. Everybody's like, Freddy's coming to Dead by Daylight. Yeah. And then the official trailer for it dropped, and it's fucking remake, J uh, remake Freddy. <laughs> and everybody's oh like, God. oh. Oh, okay. really? so this one Freddy movie they made in 2010 that nobody likes that's the license you went after <laughs> apparently new line would not give them the robert england license because it was outdated they didn't think it would sell wrongo yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it would have sold great but yeah what, i i don't Chuck know man. i i feel movie. like i feel like people like whoever's in charge of these franchises have like if they just went back to basics they would make so much money, but they just refuse to do it for some reason. I don't know why, but they just won't do it. They just will not take a good idea. It's like, just do it. Did you know that the killer nobody ever thought would be in Dead by Daylight is in Dead by Daylight right now? Chucky. Chucky and Tiffany are in Dead by Daylight. Yeah, I saw that you had said that Chucky was in Dead by Daylight, and one of the comments in one of the YouTube videos that you released was like, 
nobody's scared of him. He's like two feet tall. What the fuck is he going to do? And it's like, just wait. <laughs> just yeah, wait like, and see. They did a really cool thing with how he picks up survivors to put him on the hook. Uh, like the entity that's in the fog in this game, like comes out of the ground and forms the human version of Charles Lee Ray. And he's like carrying the doll of Chucky or uh, Jennifer comes out as, you know, Tiffany carrying Tiffany. Yeah but also carrying the survivor puts him on the hook. Then it goes back to the doll. They did a really cool thing with that, but it's definitely the hall of fame for horror and the way that they're doing that. I just know they're going to get Jason. It's just a matter of time at this point. So I there's my video wait. game horror thing. You know, I, I did, have been playing my Mario RPG remake. It's taken me back to 1996 when I was 12 and it's been so much fun. It's an amazingly fun remake. They added some new stuff at the end to make it a little harder and a little more fun. If you played the game as a kid or if you've never played it at all, Super Mario RPG is a lot of fun. Give it a try. I think it, it's so unique and, and interesting and weird. It's just, it's fun. It's just a lot of fun. Try it out. So there's Put not me in dead by daylight. I beg of you. <laughs> Josh. Yes, sir. On November, on November 18th, 1990, over 33 years ago, Stephen King's It premiered on ABC. So night one of the miniseries uh, premiered on ABC. Do you, did you watch it when it first premiered? Or what was the first time you watched that particular uh, miniseries or movie of It? I don't think my parents would have let us watch it, but it was on one of the few channels we had because it was like on like a local affiliate yeah so you might have like skipped through it or something but i remember a friend of my sister staying the night for the weekend and she brought the vhs tape over so it was probably at least two or three years after it aired because i don't think the videotape came out right away wait a minute she brought the v she brought the vhs tape or tapes josh tapes, because like i had like fucking like, nine it was like four tapes yeah um it was like the ten commandments it was like there was like it was like the Power Rangers uh, Green Ranger episode. There's like five of them. And I remember thinking the movie was like, it, it got built up of being so terrifying and so scary. And then I put it in and it's like, stand by me, you know? It was, and I was like, wait, what? Stephen King wrote both of those films. Um, I, know, I know, but like it. Uh, the first, dude, the first It, the miniseries we're talking about, I remember watching it when it premiered. I, I remember... I, I watched it at my friend's house who lived across the street from me, Albert. And oh, wow. we watched it. I watched it with his family. Um, Shout out to Albert. I was terrified of that movie when I first saw it because I couldn't, I couldn't take a bath by myself for like months after that. Um, really? I grew up in, I grew up in a coastal town that was wow. kind of similar to Derry, Maine, the way it was presented. Yeah, There was a lot of rain, a lot of sewer grates around. Uh, I had to have somebody actually go into the bathroom and like talk to me when I was in the tub and stuff. When I was a kid, I was terrified of that movie. I'm sorry. That's sad. I like, I feel bad for little Alex right now. I had my, some stuff from movies that scared me like that too, but my brother, the spoiler, in case you haven't uh, heard of Aaron Vanover, the spoiler, he's the king of spoiling movies or TV shows or any other intellectual property that you're into at the time. He'll tell you how it ends. The spoiler was commissioned by my parents with going in and watching me take a bath, right? <laughs> so Aaron played a game called Hot or Cold with me. We had Dixie Cups. So he'd fill both Dixie Cups up with water. One allegedly had warm water, right? Yeah. And one allegedly had cold water. And I had to pick which cup. So whatever cup I picked, he'd dump it on my head. And hopefully it's the warm one, right? 100% of the time, it's the cold one, no matter what one I picked. And then if he particularly wanted to be an asshole that night, he would show me that the other cup was also cold by dumping that one on my head too. So I was fucked. It was like a saw trap. It was like when the second girl from Saw who took over, like the trap, you couldn't escape it, right? You're just going to die no matter what. That was Aaron. Aaron was the first Saw guy. He was the first jigsaw, but with cups of, of water in the bathtub. All right, country buffet guy. How would you describe having uh, cups of cold water dumped on your head? Is it still hot out there? 
Okay. Uh, at least that's the last one I'm contracted to use tonight. So uh, thank you, Country Buffet guy. Um, yeah. So was that was that all the horror news? Or I got one more horror story. From him. Okay. One more. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, Tim Burton has finished shooting Beetlejuice 2. So oh, the it. movie is in the can. Yes. 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 You the, last, the last thing about it, I was going to say Tim Curry is the goat, man. He's always going to be my favorite Pennywise. And Michael Keaton, Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, can't wait to see it. That's the sequel you're talking about, right? They made Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian finally? That'll probably be part three. That'll that'll complete the trilogy. Well, that that's the one that they were going to make back in like 1990. Beetlejuice, you didn't know about that? I did not know about that. Yeah, there was a script and it was greenlit and everything. Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian what and thankfully it never got made that was the original sequel yes look I, it up later do a deep dude, dive crazy shit um when i was a kid i absolutely adored the movie beetlejuice but i loved the cartoon even more I've got um it on DVD. do you have the DVD? I, I just bought the cartoon on dvd i got it at walmart for like five bucks yeah man the whole the whole series i love yeah. it I absolutely love Beetlejuice, the cartoon. It, 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 that was, I would, seriously, I would watch it every day after school and every Saturday morning. The French skeleton um, guy. <laughs> I, love I love you, Beetlejuice. And I love the, um, you know, Beetlejuice and the real Ghostbusters had some episodes that were legit scary. Like, uh, yeah, it, yes, it I agree with you. The Keeper, the cartoon did. Like, we had some cool shit as a kid. Nowadays they're they're missing out on some good good entertainment. The the um what so what was the other one you said other than Beetlejuice the real Ghostbusters and Tales from the Crypt Keeper real Ghostbusters episode where they fight the boogeyman. Yeah, oh, that scared yeah. the shit out of me because Egon like had a past with him as when he was a kid he used to like haunt Egon when he was a child. Um, there's some scenes in that episode that are terrifying. And he's the real uh, boogie man. He's not a ghost. They can't capture him with their traps. Yeah, he's like an actual supernatural boogeyman. So he's like Freddy Krueger, basically, like without the license, because he'd come in when they were asleep and shit, and uh, they, even they actually go into, into his world. Yeah, yeah, uh, like uh, closet doors. Yeah, they they had to basically hook up their equipment and self destruct it so it would destroy the door yep. that would allow the boogeyman to enter Earth. And Basically. he was terrifying. Like, Sam Hain was another monster on Real Ghostbusters that was scary, at least in his first episode when Halloween was forever. Yeah. He was scary. Then, like, they, the show kind of got watered down and they added Joey as he, as uh, Peter and everything. Uh, the Boogeyman came back. Sam Hain came back, but they weren't as scary. But the first season when they were in syndication, that first season had some terrifying episodes in it, for real. Yeah, Check Ghostbusters, it out, Ghostbusters uh, the, the real Ghostbusters was... Or it, whatever the car. I don't think it was called the Real Ghostbusters, yeah, was it? Because the Real Ghostbusters had the monkey. No, no, no. That was just Ghostbusters. That was okay. Ghostbusters. Yeah, uh, the, the, our Ghostbusters we're talking about was called the Real Ghostbusters because yeah. they were trying to say, no, we're the Real Ghostbusters, like the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember renting Filmation's Ghostbuster by accident one time uh, because the guy kind of looked like Ray from the cartoon. Yeah, and I actually, I actually liked it. And Anthony, whenever he was younger, I got him the Filmation Ghostbusters and Real Ghostbusters, and we watched both of them. They, it was actually fun. It's more supernatural, like He-Man type stuff on uh, the Filmation one. Like, uh, there's yeah. like a Skeletor type villain that's uh, the main... It's 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 more sci-fi than paranormal. But You hear a lot of the same voice talent from He-Man in yeah. that because it's filmation it's the same yeah. crew that worked on that you know that exact uh cartoon same studio probably i'm um, definitely not dogging filmation's ghostbusters it's, it's got its own charm too so are you so i was going to say one last thing about uh, beetlejuice why why does jenna jenna ortega have to be in it is it because the, the fans now the younger kids like oh jenna ortega's in it i'll go see that because they don't know the property is that why it's either that or because of like her doing Scream and her doing Wednesday. She's kind of like become like the new gothic type actress. Mm -hmm. Like if, if anybody is like Lydia was in the first Beetlejuice, it's Jenna Ortega. I don't know. It's yeah. like she she's kind of 
Dwayne Johnson in movies right now. Too yeah. much. It's like too much. A little too much. But I don't give a shit who is in Beetlejuice 2. I'm psyched for Beetlejuice 2. So am I. Just, I watched just The Flash fact. just to see Michael Keaton as Batman. And then I cried. just Just the fact that Michael Keaton is back as Beetlejuice is amazing. Yes. Yep. So yeah, definitely worth the price of admission. You know what else is not worth the price of admission, Josh? Uh, headlines? Our first headline. Okay. Listen to this. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this. So Target, uh, Black Friday. Uh, you know how stores will be like, hey, come on down, get a TV for $10 or going. whatever. I know where you're going. Target is getting a lot of shit, Josh, because uh, the price of Black Friday. Uh, so their signage they put out for Black Friday at Target. Okay. They were covering, they were covering advertised prices for stuff that was allegedly on sale. Yep. Uh, with prices of the exact same price before Black Friday. So if yep. Josh and I went to Black Friday at like four o'clock in the morning to get a TV at Target, it would say on sale Black Friday two hundred bucks. But if we pulled the signage from behind the new Black Friday sign, it would say two hundred dollars. They said it was for sale, but it wasn't for sale. Oh my God. What and, the fuck are they thinking? Why wouldn't they at least remove the older sign if they're going to try to screw everybody over? That that was happening at Kohl's and stuff too. There's videos from all kinds of stores that day. What and the hell? It's just because people, people believe whatever they, whatever you show them, like not everybody, not everybody. Some of us are pretty sharp. Some of you are pretty sharp, but a lot of people just need the illusion of a cell and uh, they're going to buy it. So that's it's sad. That scummy but it's it's reality i guess i fucking love target and that made me like think twice before i want to go to target again yeah yeah um so so josh second second headline mm -hmm. georgia restaurant has a 50 dollars surcharge for adults who are unable to parent during a meal so the hold on let me read this the Tokyo Riverside restaurant in Blue Ridge, Georgia, has recently went viral for adding an extra charge of $50 for adults deemed unable to parent. So if you're in there and your kids are loud and they're throwing shit all over the place and they're ruining their meal for other, the meals for other people in there, you could possibly have a $50 surcharge added to your receipt. What's your thoughts on that? I'm clapping. I'm applauding. About it's like time. as if somebody dude, that's been a waiter before and i know you're a waiter you gotta you gotta agree with it i just think that it's it's like the same thing for like i think they go to a restaurant and i'm not they i'm being general like a lot of parents will just like they're so exhausted from parenting these kids that like yeah i'm in a restaurant i it's not my house i don't give a shit and then they just let the kid do whatever they don't parent them they don't scold them they don't punish them nothing the kids make it unbearable for every other person in the restaurant and the servers included to do their job. Um, I think this is a really great thing. They actually got a lot of shit on uh, social media because uh, people were outraged that they added this like $50 charge. But the owners of the restaurant say, Josh, that the policy is rarely enforced. But they didn't say, they did not say, Josh, that it's never enforced. So if you're eating in Blue Ridge, Georgia at this restaurant, you better watch your fucking P's and Q's with your kids, all right? That's all I got to say. I agree. I think that the surcharge should be split amongst the host, waiter, and cook. Yeah, they should get Yeah, they should get a tip, an extra amount of money. Dude, Josh, my least favorite thing when, when I'm waiting tables and kids are present, they're going to destroy that table and that carpet or that floor. They, whatever they're eating, it, that shit is going to be all over the ground, and then you're going to have to fucking clean it all up. It's going to take forever. When you're in the restaurant industry, Josh, what do you want? You want to flip your table and get another table and make more money, right? I want to be scrubbing stuff out of the carpet that's like... Yeah, I don't want to be fucking <laughs> vacuuming and scrubbing and, and, and shampooing the carpet so I can maybe get another table. Um, it's ridiculous. So th that's a great thing. I applaud them. Yep, I do too. Uh, last last headline, last story of the show, bud. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah, this has just flown by, man. Two firefighters were recently fired after... St after stopping at a Chick-fil-A on the way to an emergency. So these two firefighters uh, were from Washington, D.C., and they stopped, they stopped at Chick-fil-A during an emergency call. Uh, and they, they lost their jobs because instead of responding to the call for a lady feeling sharp pains in her chest, 
they decided to pick up their food instead. And when they were asked to elaborate on why they stopped instead, uh, you know, at the restaurant, instead of going to help this woman, they claimed to have ordered the meal just prior to the call. And they plan to just pick it up and and on the way to the emergency. I call bullshit. Anybody that's ever been to Chick-fil-A knows there's going to be at least 20 cars in the drive-thru. And like one of those like big lines through the little walking area going up to the Even register. if it's online, it's going to take forever. Yeah, it, it, you're not getting in and out of Chick-fil-A at all. But in their defense, they were picking up Chick-fil-A. So if it's the spicy chicken sandwich... Or it's saving delicious. someone's life. I got to admit, I'm a little torn. Chick-fil-A is good. And also, who knows if the call was made, you know, late Saturday night because Chick-fil-A is not open on Sunday. So you only have one chance. Yeah. Yeah. You go. You, it's like lady might die. Get your Chick-fil-A. You, at that point, you kind of got to flip a coin, I think. Yep. Um, they got fired. I hope that chicken sandwich was the best chicken sandwich they've ever eaten in their lives because they're fired for it. Do you do you like spicy chicken sandwiches? Who doesn't? I'm going to give a quick hat to anybody that's ever had a KFC Buffalo Snacker. These were things that were really good back in like 2008. They discontinued them in like 2014. They are like a little, little mini roll with a KFC original or crispy chicken strip like covered in buffalo sauce. They discontinued them. But I found a hack, and Alex, you should give this a try. Do you have a KFC okay. and a wing stop in your area? We have a KFC near us, and there's a wing stop, I believe, in Salem. So, okay. yeah, I'd like an hour from here. Go to KFC, get you a few chicken littles. Tell them you want okay. them plain. Then go to wing stop and get a few sides of their original hot buffalo. Okay. Take those both home. Douse your chicken strips from your sandwiches in the buffalo. Put the sandwich back together. You got a KFC Buffalo Snacker. Mwah. Great stuff, man. It's amazing. Best. It's worth all the work. I promise. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, and that has been Josh's Food Corner uh, on Slash Tracks News, episode 31. And I'm going to piggyback on the Food Corner real quick. Uh-huh. Real quick. Okay. McDonald's Snack Wrap is officially coming back. Taco Bell Double Decker Taco is officially coming back. They've both been voted back. And... Josh recently got an adult Happy Meal at McDonald's and got a fucking McNugget buddy. So should I, should, I get it? should I get it? You should get it. I'll be right back. Go grab the McNugget buddy. Josh showed up to McDonald's, got an adult Happy Meal, got a McNugget buddy. Uh, McNugget buddies were probably the coolest Happy Meal item ever besides the boo buckets and like the Tiny Toon Adventure cars and uh, the Muppet Babies uh, toys they had back in like 87. But yeah, boo mcnugget buddies were top tier there's the mcnuggets buddy right there i'm not going to take it out of the box though but it's the real deal he did it he it's broke the cherry on the mcnugget buddies hasn't been broken yeah but you beat me to getting one first is what you did i know well you beat me on the other one so all i ended up with was a really messed up grimace one remember that i found on the ground <laughs> yeah i do remember that uh josh man exciting stuff in the show buddy all right guys thank you so much for watching and gals guys and gals and assholes thank you all for watching uh be sure to write us at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com sign up on patreon to support the channel at patreon.com forward slash 80 slash librarian cameo.com forward slash slash tracks network to get a cool cameo video from us paypal Shoot us a donation there, dollar, two bucks, whatever. We appreciate it all, and it helps the channel. You can send a donation to daylighter07 at yahoo.com. We even have a cash app handle. Everything's in the description below. Be excellent to each other. Always remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. Good night. Have a pleasant tomorrow. Alex, say good night. Good night. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dogs. After these messages, we'll be right back. You, dude, you fucking broke me when you said boy, men and women are boys and girls and assholes. And assholes, yes. Assholes, too. You're welcome here. Just uh, keep the really, really personal, dirty shit to yourself, okay? Yeah. Or, look at or I'll here. fucking put you on, or we'll put you on blast again.
uh, oh. which would actually probably ironically give that guy some sort of weird self-worth because now we featured him in the first like five minutes of the episode. So oh, he probably got off on it. It's a good point. Um, shit. Uh, say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. See you later. All right, bye. You've got me mad now. Hey, this is Marcus Bagwell. Uh, today's date is November 15th, 2023. And today I am 446 days sober. Wow. Just want to give you a little, you know, catch up on what's going on in, in my life. And it's time we haven't really checked in lately with this. So it's, it's, uh, it's a good time to do so. And I just want to let everybody know out there how I'm doing on day 446. When I go back to August 27th, 2022, 446 days ago, from that day, Black Bear Recovery, their, their slogan was one day at a time. It was just for today, and it stomped. I thought that was the stupidest thing I had ever heard of. But it was so powerful looking back on it because my sobriety is only good just for today. I thought the hardest part of sobriety and recovery was going to be not using, you know, not taking Somas and Xanaxes and drinking alcohol. And it 446 days ago, just for that day, not doing that was a big deal. It, it was gigantic. And so every day we'd get up at Black Bear and it was just for today. And thought it was stupid. Day 10, stupid. Day 20. Day 25, I started buying into the, to the stomp. It, it, it meant something. I was getting proud at 25 days. But over the last 100 days, you know, you, you clear the 30, you get out of rehab, and you're, you've reached a goal. Um, and you're still, the goal still is not to use, not to take a Soma, not to take a Xanax. But you don't quite know why yet. You're just, you're just trying to be abstinent from alcohol and pills. And you're doing it just for the day. And now all of a sudden, you're, you know, 60 days and you get your chip, you know, and then you're 90 days and you get your chip and then you're, you're moving up, man. You're going to your AA meetings and all of a sudden I run into what I think in my sobriety walk is it's not so hard to not use. It's hard to deal with your emotions without using. So me staying away from alcohol and staying away from pills is easy, but now when you throw in the mix of DUI court and life and temper and patience, and you got to deal with that temper and you got to deal with that patience, and you're forced to deal with it because the only answer not to deal with it is to use. And I've got way too much invested here on my sobriety, way too much on my recovery to, to even have that thought that enters my mind. It's gone. So what you're faced with is dealing with that temper. And man, I have realized that my temper is out of control. It's, it's dangerous. And how this has came full circle for me is DUI court. Um, the DUI court program works with phases. I'm in phase you start with phase one and there's, you know, there's a regiment. There's so many AA meetings and court appearances and things like that. And they allow you to travel, but certain ways and you got to turn sheets in and papers in. It's, it's all about accountability. But the more I learned about it, it's all about life. It's, thing about, it's about being a better person. It's about being a more successful person and not fighting, not fighting that thing that they're trying to show us. I've had a couple of setbacks over the over the DUI court program with my temper. And again, never really having to address it because before I addressed it with alcohol and pills. And that got me through it. Well now you gotta process it. You gotta think about it 
and you still got to live in life and make it happen. The DUI court program has sanctions and one of my sanctions was for 24 hours for having paperwork wrong where I had traveled and I didn't put my inner flight in because I didn't, I didn't think it was necessary and to put up the time I was at the Dallas airport in, but they let me know that they did want to know that and here's 24 hours. So that was one of them and then I, my temper got me into another one where I, again, thought I was right, but looking back on it, I could have handled it totally different. I did not, and my temper got me into that situation. So I did, I think, 48 the next time, because it's not the same punishment each time. Both those times, of course, it got out that, you know, Buff Bagwell relapsed, and that's not the case. The case was it was a sanction, a DUI court sanction. Unfortunately, when you look it up online, it's not... It's not any fun for a paper to say Buff Bagel got arrested for a DUI sanction. <laughs> it's much better to say Buff Bagel got arrested for a relapse and he's in there for speeding and, and reckless driving and all the things that happened three plus years ago. So that is the truth. That is what's going on. But it's all these things has come to a point where I'm really having to deal with my temper for the first time in my life. And it's really, it's really tough. Um, I'm quick to smart off. I'm quick to answer. If I'm a little bit in the right, I will, I will push my way to say, here's how it is. And that's just not how you got to function in life. So recently, uh, in DUI court class, um, I'd asked the teacher uh, a question on how to do something and she told me I did it and she failed me and I flipped. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? Looking back on it, I could have handled it so much differently. And so because of my, my temper, I'm now in another situation. I actually got court tomorrow, which is going to be November 16th, Thursday, November 16th. And I'll be going to court for and in-class disruption. And it's going to be out there that Buff Bag will relapse, but I'm letting you know that I am clean and sober and doing fantastic. But I may be going to jail for my temper, which is the next goal in my life to overcome. They always say it takes a village. And, you know, and I never really understood that sentence or that statement, but it's the truth. It takes a village. And in recovery, it's, it takes a support team. Under that umbrella of DDPY, you've got Dallas and Steve Yu and all the people here at, from Trevor to Nate to, to Brock to, to, to Grizz to, to Larry to, to Nadia to Kat to, I mean, it's unbelievable just how everybody's Matt. I think I named everybody. <laughs> Spectre. But they all, all under that umbrella, it really is a big deal. And, um, and that is, looking back on it, there's no doubt how much that helped me. Looking at just the knee replacement that happened on September 6th, 2023, I am, you know, eight weeks into this, and for the first time in three years, I got a little bit of, a little bit of hope that I'm already, I'm already walking almost normal, but a little bit of hope that I may be able to run and a little bit of hope that I'll be able to maybe get in the ring a little bit and hit the ropes again and stuff. And just that, that was just, a, just, a, just 446 days ago, that wasn't, that wasn't real. And through DDPY, Steve Yu, Dallas, and the team here, and my wonderful niece, that's, that all started 446 days ago, and that team is still there pushing for me to get better with my knee and and seeing the chances I've got and getting back in the gym and and there's just so many good things that have came out of sobriety. I thought the human brain needed to be sedated and that you feeling good was a reward from you going through struggles in the day. So I rewarded myself with the relaxation of a 
alcohol beverage and a pill, and all that did was catch me in a 20-year addiction that went like that. I mean, man, it was like that. It's gone. And I can't get it back. I'm not depressed about it. It's just sad that it took me getting 15 months sober, 446 days, and see how wonderful this side of the fence can be with sobriety. And I don't think even you guys knew that I was going to pull it off to be able to say 446 days. But I am, and I want to thank each and every person out there. I want to thank every person that stood by me. And I know there's a lot of you, man. I just want to tell you thanks so much, and I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and a merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year.